And I, I really thank God that when I came to this place and see all the children here, are your hearts touched when you see so many children? When they love Jesus, when they think about Jesus, when they uh, respond to Jesus, when you see that, do you see a future in this country? You know, when I see this, I say, this is really wonderful. This is really beautiful. And I talk to your principal about this, and we have a, a vision, but I'll talk about that later. First, I'll talk about God's vision in your heart. Let me first share with you about a person that I know in um, China. And she has a special gift. She spent a lot of time praying, waiting for the Lord. <laughs> Three hours every morning. Generally, she wakes up at 4 a.m. And she waits for the Lord. And then until the children, her child wake up. And then for the three hours, she wait for the Lord. And she experienced the work of the Lord. And also, she was taken to heaven. Two or three times a week. That God would take her to different places. To show her different things God would do. Uh, and it's also proven. How is it proven? Because she saw people, she saw Christians who died and went to heaven. And then she talked to these people in heaven. And then passed the words to the family members. And the family members said, you must have seen them in heaven. That's how real heaven is. To me, you know, some people said, where is heaven? Where, how can I see heaven? Do I know, how do I know it's true? But let me tell you, heaven is very real to me. She's one person, she has seen Christians who died and then passed the words back to, she passed the words back to the family members and they said, you must have seen them in heaven. And also I know another person in Hong Kong. She also prayed and went to heaven about a dozen times. And she saw different things in heaven. And, and I know for sure God is real. There are different people who have experience of going to heaven. And these experiences are proven, like the first woman I told you about in China, that what she's, you know, actually I purposely went to videotape three families who heard her words, that the message she passed from heaven. And then I videotaped them, and they all testified that because she knew something about these people in heaven, and so they know that that she really went to heaven, that heaven is very real. Uh, it's very real, and heaven is very real to me. I know God is real. Every time I pray, I can experience His presence, and you too, so many of you have experienced the peace, and the love, and the, some of you experience deliverance, and the power of God, and you can experience more. But the point is very important. When you see God working, do you respond? You say, this is wonderful. And let me tell you this woman, minister in China, and she saw the future of herself. God showed her different visions. She saw her future in, a, in heaven and so, saw that she was glorious in the future. And she couldn't believe that. Is that me in the future? And Christ said to her, yes, this is you in the future. And she was surprised that she would become so glorious. When we follow God's plan, you will all become very glorious. She also saw me in heaven. And she saw that I was a, a majestic prince in heaven. Wow. And she also said that I'll be connected with her in her ministry. That she saw that, you know, God is using me. And actually other people saw dreams of me. I'm, I'm not boasting. Let me tell you, I'm saying, I'm humble. I am nobody, but God chose me when I was weak to use me. But what I'm saying is you, all of you, can go into the plan of God. The point is, when you heard about all this work of God, do you respond? Do you say, wow, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. I have stories after stories of healing. One woman came to me with her daughter, 20-year-old daughter. That was, she remembered the day. 2014, January 13. And she says she remembered this day as like her anniversary. 
Now, why did she remember this day like her anniversary? She said, because her daughter had been sleepless, just sleep very little for about four years, have insomnia for four years, and she has to drop out of college because of her sleeping problem. And the daughter was always frustrated, crying and saying, why does this happen to me? Why am I sleepless? And, and, and she couldn't understand. And then she brought her daughter to my meeting. And I prayed for her, and that night she started to sleep. And then her sleep get better and better, and finally she could sleep normally, and she went back to school, and now she has finished her college degree. And she said she has gone to see different doctors, and no one could cure her except Jesus. And so she remembered that they liked her anniversary. When she saw that, she said, this is wonderful. And she and her daughter were willing to serve God. That's how they want to respond to God. And, and I see that the work of God, I'm touched by God. I say, God, you're so wonderful. You do miracles all the time, and your life can be changed. I've seen so many people change. And, and in these days, a number of people came, and I prayed for them, or counseled them. And then their life is changed. And the main thing is, God has a wonderful plan in your life. And one day when you go to heaven and see the future of you, you say, if I follow God, I'll become like that. You'll be surprised. <coughs> God will say, yes. When you follow me, you'll become a majestic person. You'll become a glorious person. You'll be affecting many people. I never knew that. You know, the 1998 experience, when the evangelist laid hand on me and the experience of power of God and the love of God, that changed my heart so much, even though at that time I've been a pastor for 15 years. But at that, that experience changed my heart and said, I didn't know I can do such great things because my concept in the past is people come to church and listen and I keep talking to them and hopefully it will change them but I found that it's very hard to change your lives because the Bible, in, in, in the Bible Jesus said, you know, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. That will need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to bring a stronger change to people's lives. And I've seen so many people change instantly. Let me use an illust illustration. One time I, um, did I say this story because I have so many stories. Uh, one story was in a hospital. I drove a demon from a person. Ha have you heard this one? Okay. One time I was in a meeting. I was in a meeting and there were two ministers. One I know and one I did not know. And the person, the minister I knew, talked to another minister. The other minister said, I have one person in the church. She has evil spirit. And I want to look for a famous pastor to drive out demons. And I said to that minister, if you want to wait for this famous pastor, you might have to wait for a long time. But today I can go with you to drive out the demons. And then so we went to the hospital, and that, that girl was really out of control. That she, was, she couldn't stand. She was like this when we came to her. And then she would say, evil spirit there and there. That's how she was. But when, at that time, actually, she could not follow our prayer. She could not say the name of Jesus. But after I prayed for her, she was calm and peaceful. And then the doctor said on, a pre, uh, on that same day, she, uh, the doctor said, according to your situation, you have to go to the mental hospital because doctors don't believe in evil spirit. But the next day when the doctor came, she was all calm. And the doctor said, well, I don't see anything wrong with you. You can go home now. So that's how wonderful God is. But at that occasion when I prayed for her, she has a number of young friends who came. There was a woman in the uh, 20s, and she was dressed in a business suit. And she came, she was one of her friends. And I, I said to the friends, I said, I can pray for you for protection so that evil spirit would not attack you. So I prayed for all of them. And I came to pray for this lady with the business suit. And then she experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, and she was moving like this, like some of you. And I said, open your heart more. And she opened her heart, and suddenly, she started to laugh. And we were standing in front of elevator. 
upstairs in the hospital. And there were people walking by all the time. But she did not mind. She was just filled with the joy of the Lord and she was laughing for about five minutes. And then she started to cry for about 20 minutes. And later she told me because she was hurt from the, uh, her, uh, when she was young and she has all these hurtful experiences and God released all those. And after that, she experienced the joy of the Lord again. And I said to her, God is so real. Are you willing to follow God? And then she started to go to my church. And then later she went to study for ministry. And now she is a missionary. And another person that just walked by my church and then came to me and then and I prayed for her and then she cried for a long time that God set her free. And then she said, please come to my village because my family members have believed in Jesus for so many years but none of them experienced this joy. And she wants me to go to her home village. So I went there and I prayed for all of them. At first they experienced repentance and they all cried. And then later they experienced the joy of the Lord. And one woman, because of uh, her husband's problem, every time we prayed for her, she was crying. She said, how come everybody was filled with the joy of the Lord and I'm crying? I said, because you have a lot of sorrow. And But finally, one day she was filled with the joy of the Lord. And also the 89-year-old grandmother, she said, I have been to church for years. I never saw people filled with joy. They're enjoying the presence of God. And she was also rejoicing. You know, in the morning when I was leaving, they were waiting for me. They were waiting for me to finish my breakfast and have the little time to pray for them, to keep the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then I said to the woman who brought me there, I said, you saw the work of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to be used by God to bless the people? Do you want to serve God? And she said, yes. And now she's a minister. I have raised some ministers like that. And I've seen that the work of the Holy Spirit is so powerful, so real, so beneficial to us that it's something very precious. So I hope even though some of you experience the Holy Spirit just in a light, you know, a, a small degree, but it doesn't matter. He will continue to bless you. He will continue to love Him and treasure Him and honor Him. And God has a plan in your life. In Psalm 139, verses 16 to 17. Psalm 139, verses 16 to 17. In the second part of verse 16, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. What it says here is all the days ordained for my life were written in your book before one of the days came to me. So all the days of your life were written in heaven. And one day when you go to heaven, you see, wow, this is the plan of God so wonderful. But how come only this small portion is fulfilled in my life? Now many of you will see the wonderful plan of God is so great. But when you go to heaven, you see, only so small is fulfilled. Let me tell you, if not for the experience of the Holy Spirit, I am a very different pastor. I did not have this fire. I did not have this power of the Holy Spirit. I did not have this confidence. I haven't seen people healed. I haven't seen people have demons driven out. I haven't seen people raised up to serve God. But after that experience, because Jesus said, when you go to preach the gospel, you need the Holy Spirit come upon you to give you power. That is the plan of God. But at that time, I did not know that. You know, many people just believe in the work of the Holy Spirit to touch on the heart of people, to draw them to repentance and, and to believe in Jesus. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, the most important work of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit also brings us power that we can do great things for God. And Life is not just about earning money and earning a living. I mean, animals also have their living. Animals have their food and they can live their life to the fullest. We as humans, we don't just live up to 60, 70, 80, 90 years old and then you say, I have, I have food to eat all these years, I have a job, I have children, so I'm satisfied. Are you satisfied just with that? 
Is your life just about earning money and having a living and have children? Is your life just about that? As human, we know we need meaning in life. We need achievement. We need to do something that is long lasting. But everything in the world will be gone. All the money you have, you have saved will be used up or passed on to your children. They won't do you any good after you die. And then everything will go away. On everything we have achieved in the world. If you have built a house, you cannot live in that house anymore. But let me tell you, what you have done for God will stay forever in heaven. They will follow you forever. And what, how you bless people will stay forever. And one day, when we know God is real, I hope you believe this. One day in heaven, God will show you this crowd of people, this crowd of pupils. All these people, you have done influences in their life. You have changed your life. And what you have done is great. But you could have done better if you had been filled with the Holy Spirit and obeyed Him and find the plan of God. And when this woman minister in China who go to heaven, a lot of time, you know, she wrote down her records of what she saw in heaven. And I read that. And I was touched to see how beautiful heaven is, how good heaven is, and how there's so many things in heaven. And, and see that wonderful plan. And I'm, I'm really thankful that she saw me. In the future, I'll be a majestic prince. And another woman also saw my book of life when she went to heaven in Hong Kong. That this woman said, after I prayed for her and drive out demons, and her life was totally changed, and then later one day she was taken to heaven, and she saw the book of life. And God told her, this is the book of life, your book of life. And then she said, I want to see Pastor Yip's book of life, because, you know, I'm a person who helps her. And she said, I want to see Pastor Yip's book of life. And then she saw it. And she saw that the, th the book was thick, and it was covered with gold, and on top, she said she saw something, and I'm really thankful. She said, it says, my beloved son. My beloved son. When I, when I heard that, I'm touched. I'm not worthy of that. It's not that I'm worthy. It's God raised me up when I was weak. And God can raise you up too. I'm very thankful that God called me his beloved son, that he likes me. That he loves me, he likes me, he likes what I'm doing. And there are people, and this woman said too, God said to her, you learn from Pastor Yip, you learn from his life. And I'm very thankful that God has taught me how to take care of problems in my life. You know, when I come back in the future, I will talk more. This time I won't, don't have time to talk anymore. We only have so little time this time. But I'm thankful I can be with you these few days. And I'm thankful, I'm humble, it's not me, it's God. That God can use me. If not for the experience in 1998, I would still be the pastor without much power. But now, I have the power of the Holy Spirit, and wherever I go, people are changed. And also, God gave me visions. So I hope you believe your, the, your book of life. If you believe in Jesus, you have a book of life in heaven. It's, your name is written there. But maybe at this time, your book is still very small. <laughs> the plan has not been fulfilled yet. But if you want to follow God's plan, the book will show everything you have done. It will become bigger and bigger. Your, your, the record of your life will become more and more beautiful. Do you want that? Yes. Do you want the record of your life to be, to be you know, blessing many people? Mm. Or do you just want to eat, drink, and sleep? Is that all it's about? To have children is life just about that. But if you see that God is so much better than anything else. Let me tell you, when I pray for people and see the joy of the, on the face of the people, hallelujah, hallelujah. When people have sadness, this few days some people came to me and they said I have burdens and then I pray for them. They said the burdens is coming out and then they were filled with the joy of the Lord. When I see the face, that is my reward. Of course, God will give me more, re more reward, but I'm not thinking about the reward. I'm thinking about I bless people. But when I see the smile on the face, it's very beautiful. 
compared to the people in the world, what they look for is just fun. For some people, fun in sex, and it brings corruption to many families. Many families are broken up. They think it's fun, but it breaks up families and breaks up the country. It's terrible, isn't it? It's terrible. And some of you are suffering from that. That maybe some of you are single mothers. That you have problem in the family. But God doesn't want that. God wants your life to blossom and you can bless children. These children, now if we don't help them, they will become single mothers. Irresponsible fathers. Do you want them to be like this? When I see these children, my heart is touched. God touched my heart. God, let me see that. God has a destiny in this school, in the principal, in you, and in the children. And I talk to the principal, and it agrees what is in her heart. And it touched her heart. And when she heard that, she said, this is the answer of my prayer. I told her that. You can start a church here. You can do it. You can find people to work with you and then bring up this student to honor marriage from childhood that they understand that it's important to have real love before people get married. It's, marriage is not just about sex. It's about dedication and love. Now, some of you may have seen my wife's picture. <laughs> That's me and my wife. And I bring a picture everywhere, and I tell people everywhere about her. Amen. And I want to keep the best relationship with her. Yes. And when I woke up, I was on an online video phone to talk with her. And then when I was eating breakfast, I was talking with her. That, of course, when we're busy, then we don't talk. But then we want to keep the best communication yes. and the love so that we become an example. But then, First of all, we enjoy it. And also, she helps me greatly in marriage. When people are in ma marriage like that, you know, the whole life is like heaven. It can be, can be very happy. Let me tell you, I haven't seen any marriage like mine so far. I haven't seen any husband and wife loving each other so much. And I want to see more of these children grow up. And they become good examples in this country. Then they see People from this church have good marriage. Amen. People from this church, they really change the society. Mm. Do you want to see that happen? Yes. You know, God has a destiny, not only in individuals, but also in the church, in a country, mm. in the whole world. And you can be part of it. So when you're teachers here, when you see this vision, you'll be always helping the children to love God more. Not only that you experience God, you help them to love God more, to follow God's way, not just to do good. It's very important. Being a Christian, some people think, oh, then you obey the teacher, obey the parents, you be a good boy, good girl. Christianity is not just about being a good person. It's about a person who glorifies God, Amen. who shows the life of God, who talks about Jesus, mm. and then they have a good life. It's very important. It's not just about good life. It's glorifying Jesus, showing Jesus, and a good life to support them. And you can affect them. And I talk to your principal. Can you preach? Can you teach? Can you counsel? And you can find helpers to lead you, uh, to work with you, to build up the church. But when you see, you know, 1,200 children, if one tenth come, will be 120 and every year there could be more and more people when these people are built up they will be excited for the Lord and then they will bring more people and the church could affect the culture of Botswana mm -hmm. now when I see things I see a vision I see a vision behind them when I see people when I talk to apostle when I look at the pastors and I look at the people and actually uh, your principal has answered one prayer because we talk about how we can have training for pastors and we want to look for a place that's not a church. And then your principal said her preschool is one place. Then next time when I come, could be in July. Amen. And when they are in holidays, and then I can do, do it there and then I can help you. 
with the church mm -hmm. after you started. Now, when we want to start something like this, we have to have the vision. Yes. First, the vision in your life. Do you have a vision in your life? Is your vision just about earning money? I have enough money. Is that it? Or is your vision, my life has to be fruitful and influencing people and these people grow up to be people who change the country. You know, when I look at this country, what I see is many people look for jobs and don't find jobs. There need to be people who are creative to create jobs. Not just look for jobs. To creative to create possibilities for jobs. Possibility how to improve the country. The country needs a lot of improvement. With this improvement, Botswana can become a great country. Do you want your country be, to become better? Yes. You know, in Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14, where it says that, if my people who are called by my name will come to me and humble themselves and pray to me and <laughs> seek my face and turn away from their wickedness, I will hear them from heaven yes. and then I will come down and forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Amen. He will come to heal the land. You know, your work here is not just a work. It can be a ministry to heal Botswana mm. and to heal Africa. Yes. Do you want to be part of that? That when you see Botswana change, improve, will you be happy? Do you love this country? Do you love these children? Mm. Do you have love inside you? When you have love, you just want to say, I want to do something for the country. I'm not an African. Although my hair is black, maybe I'm one. <laughs> a little bit close to you. <laughs> I'm not African. But I love you all. I have the heart to come to you just to bless. Not for money. I came here to bring money. I don't came here to, to take money. I go to places to bless, not to receive blessings. God has given me many blessings. I want to bless different places. When we have the heart like this to bless, God will bless you more and more. I always have the heart to bless. And I'm very happy all the time. I'm happy all the time when I see people change. And one day you see these children change. Some of them, let, let me tell you, there are miracle school in different parts of the world. These children who pray for other people and they get well. And they say, we can have the power of God also to pray for people. You'll be, you'll be surprised when these children testify in the future. I pray for my parents, I pray for my friends and they got healed and I see that God is real. I want to serve God. And they, these schools could also raise up ministers and missionaries in the future that affect Africa and other parts of the world. When you hear this, is your heart touched? Do you want to see blessings come from God to this school, to you, to the children and to this country? To this world, we need to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. We need to raise up people to be ready. The Lord will come back. Everyone has to face Him. The Bible has prophesied the second coming of Jesus is being fulfilled. And we know that He will come back. Some people say, I'm not going to look at that. Even if you don't look at that, one day you look at it. Because the Bible said that there will be worse and worse condition. There will be earthquakes, famines, heat, coldness, financial problem, all these problems. But the people of God will have strength from God. But we also will suffer in a period of time. But we will have strength. And Jesus said, in those days when you are persecuted, you don't have to think about what to say because the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. And you will have the special honor to be able to glorify God in a very special way. Amen. And I hope that when you hear this, your heart will say, Lord, I want to be used by God. I want to make a difference in the revival, the big revival that is going to come. Actually, revival can start right here. When you dedicate your life to God and say, Lord, I want to live in your love that I talk about. I want to live in your presence. I want to feel the Holy Spirit. I want to be changed by you. I want to take care of my problems. And then I want to bless people. And then your life will start to change. And when you bless people,
the Lord will come to bless you more and more. When you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Let me tell you, in the world people, many people seek money. But they always seek money and they always are in short of money. Always looking and always in difficulty. But when you follow God, He will provide for your need. It doesn't mean you don't work. But God will provide for your need and God will take care of you. And I pray that God will raise some of you up. Now today, I'm going to ask you, how many of you, you could, would consider in, what, in some ways to help build up this church? Maybe the way is on weekdays when you come to teach, you can help the children. That's one way. Another way, maybe some of you will participate in building up the church here. And I told the principal, I am willing to help. She can talk with me on Skype. And then I would, uh, I, and I can also do workshop here and with past in El Paso, Big Cliff, and I will also do with Kenya to train people different places. I'm willing to do my part to help make this work out. But when you are willing to participate, when you want to find meaning, not just going to church on Sunday, but to go to church and minister to people and help people, and some of you can be raised up to be leaders. And I said to her, even though I, I'm busy, because tonight there's an overnight, I won't be staying overnight. I will just leave praise and worship for a while and teaching. And then, but I'm willing to spend more time in the afternoon today and tomorrow for some of you who are willing. And at 2 o'clock, for some of you who are interested, can stay behind. And then we'll talk a little, a little bit about that. And we can, I can also do a short training. At this point, let us pray. Let us rise to pray. For God to move in our heart. Because God, you have a destiny for every person, for every school, for every country. Then you have the destiny for this school. Thank you, Lord, that you have put this thought into my heart. I put the thought into the heart of the principal. Lord, you have this heart to bless this place. You have the heart to bless this country. Lord, help us to see that our life is not just about making money, earning a living, having children, getting married. It's not just about that. It's about how we can bless people, how we can glorify God, how we can let people see the love of God, how we can change people's life, how we can bring healthy marriage to this country, how we can build up the morality of this country, that this country will go stronger and stronger and healthier. Mm. Oh Thank Lord, you, Jesus. help us to see the purpose in life is in you. Because we have been created by Christ and for Christ. That our purpose in life is in Jesus Christ. That Jesus can make things so beautiful. We can see people changed by God, filled with the joy of the Lord, filled with the love of God, being healed by God. We can see that God is alive and God can change people. Oh Lord Jesus, move in our heart. To speak to us. Speak to us so that we will respond to the calling of God. So we respond to God and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, I need you to feel, fulfill the plan of God. I want to follow God's plan because God's plan is the best that can happen to us. Mm. Help us to remember everything in the world, the world is the Lord's and everything that is in it belongs to the Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to believe that we cannot run away from God. Everything belongs to God. When we follow God's way, everything will become better and better and more beautiful and more blessed. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh Lord, please move in our heart to raise up people who are interested, who are motivated to help these children to love God more, to follow God more, to build up healthy marriage, to affect this country, to build up this country. Lord Jesus, please raise up people. Move in our heart, that our heart is stirred. That when we hear this, our heart wants to do something. We want to do something. We want to respond to your calling. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Your will will be done. Even when some people disobey, it's okay. Because God will find the right people to fulfill the plan. Lord Jesus, move in our heart. 
Now, if some of the people here today, when you hear this calling, your heart is just stirred and warmed up and burned with fire. God is speaking to you. When you feel your heart being stirred, your heart is really unrest. It's in a, a, a condition of being excited, enthusiastic. Yes, Lord, I need to do something. Although we might not know what to do, but I want to do something. I want to see change in Botswana. I want to see change in the lives of people. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, move in our heart. Now, if you are moved by God to participate in this meaningful ministry, whatever way, on weekdays to help them or on weekend, whatever way, God has called you. If you feel this calling in your heart, could you raise your hand? Only if you receive that move of the, of the Lord. It doesn't mean you have to be talented. It just means you want to do something for it. If God moves in your heart, can you come forward here to this area? Come forward here. <coughs> Some of you raise your hand. And the other people, if you want to do something for it, come forward here. Come forward. Please come forward. We'll pray together for you. Be courageous. Be courageous. At this point, is there anyone else? I saw people raise your hand. When you raise your hand, you come forward. You raise your hand, you come forward. Go ahead, come forward. A man at the door. You raise your hand, you can come forward. And who else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus, Lord. You have a wonderful plan in this church, mm. in this school, in this church, mm. in our lives. Mm. Lord, you are so wonderful. Lord, please help us to go into your plan. Mm. Help us to believe that when we follow your plan, that's the best that can happen to us. Mm. It's, our life is not about earning money. Even when people earn a lot of money, they, their life can be empty. But when we follow your plan, your whole, our whole life will be fulfilled and full of the joy of the Lord, full of the love of God, full of motivation. Oh Lord, come and bless us. Not to look at reward, but to look at, Lord, you are the most important person in my life. You can make changes in my life. You can use my life. I can be used greatly by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, help us all to enter the calling of God. Help us all to enter the ministry of the Lord. To follow the calling of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else you want to follow God's calling? If you're willing, come forward. Hallelujah.